Greetings, I'm Doug Patterson, Professor of Astronomy at Johnson County Community College in Overland Park, Kansas, and Researcher at Fundamental Technologies in Lawrence, Kansas. We present a new data product in high-resolution energy spectra of helium, carbon, oxygen, silicon, and iron for the duration of the ACE and Ulysses missions using two-parameter composition aperture PHA uh, measurements from the EPAM and high scale instruments for uh, energies around a third to 10 MeV per nucleon. Uh, this data set has been posted on the Virtual Energetic Particles Observatory uh, server as well as our uh, servers here at Fundamental Technologies. We present several examples in the following slides and on our poster. Uh, situations in which this new data product may be utilized, including event averages, particle reservoir analysis, and analysis of quiescent particle or periods between events. ACE and Ulysses inhabit very disparate regions in the heliosphere, with ACE being in a halo orbit around L1, and Ulysses being in a highly inclined, highly eccentric heliopolar orbit. It's fortunate that ACE carries the EPAM instrument, which was originally the flight spare of the high-scale instrument on board Ulysses. With two nearly identical instruments in two very different regions of space, it's quite natural to utilize the two to examine variations of the interplanetary medium as a result of radial distance and helial latitude. There are five different collimating telescopes on EPAM and high scale, and seven different solid-state detectors. For this data set, we use the Pulse Height Analyzer PHA system, which uses data from the C and D detectors in the Composition Aperture, uh, or CA60, telescope. As an ion makes its way through the two detectors, the C and D detectors, it deposits differing amounts of energy in each one, and the ion species and uh, charge that can be determined by the amount of energy deposited in, in those two detectors. As the ion makes its way through the two detectors, it deposits differing amounts of energy in each based on the ion species and charge state. The voltage pulse heights in the C and D detectors are digitized and stored as ordered pairs, which are then plotted in D versus C. Uh, one can determine total energy and identity of the incident uh, ion based on modeled responses of the energy loss various species will experience in the two detectors. Reality is seldom as clean and tidy as a model, so to be sure of the modeled response, we overlay the results of a day's incident ions in CD space over our modeled tracks for various species. As you can see above, the, there is variance especially for helium, but the recorded values for the C and D pulses are well centered on our modeled tracks. Identifying and keeping count of the ions is only half the battle. Once the total counts and total accumulation times are known, we can calculate fluxes, but in order to believe those fluxes to be genuine, we compare our spectra both internally and externally for normalization errors. Internally, the C and D detectors are also used to measure proton, helium, and heavy ion rates uh, via the WART system. The W3 and W4 channels uh, of that system measure helium exclusively and should produce fluxes that align well with the helium spectra that we derive from the PHA matrix. Uh, these checks come out uh, just fine, as we'll see uh, here very shortly in the following slides. Externally, we can verify the normalization by comparing the PHA spectra, or the spectra derived from the PHA uh, data, to those from other instruments on board ACE and Ulysses, which measure low energy cosmic rays such as CIS on board ACE and COSPIN on board Ulysses. Also, during particle reservoir periods, the spectra between ACE and Ulysses should be nearly identical, and that will serve as a good way to judge or uh, evaluate the normalization of our, uh, of our calculated fluxes from the PHA data. Here are helium spectra from one of the particle reservoir periods after the 2003 Halloween event, constructed from the EPAM and high-scale PHA data, and compared to the W3 and W4 fluxes from the high-scale WART data. As you can see, there is good agreement not only between EPAM and high scale, but also between the fluxes derived from the PHA matrix and separately derived fluxes from the wart rates. This internal 
uh, check, check between the PHA and the wart. Also, uh, the, uh, an initial external check uh, that is looking at the uh, congruence of the spectra, the fluxes from Ulysses and high scale during this particle reservoir period, give us a, uh, an initial bit of good confidence that we do have the normalization uh, right for our PHA derived fluxes. Here we compare the PHA derived helium and oxygen fluxes to the higher energy fluxes from the cosmic ray experiments cis and co-spin on EPAM and high scale respectively. During a 27 day period, a uh, uh, Bartle's rotation 2328, uh, between uh, events in early 2004. The agreement of these four spectra are very strong in, led, in lending additional confirmation that the normalization of our PHA derived fluxes uh, is accurate and spot on. To be sure, the agreement seen in the previous slide is not always so tight. Here we show Bartle's rotation average spectra for the duration of the Ulysses mission uh, from late 1990 until its mission end in the middle of uh, 2009. Uh, where, the eight, where the data from uh, ACE EPAM are available, we plot those as well. Using the previously described method of analyzing the PHA data from EPAM and high scale, we have generated two data sets, one of daily average spectra and one of spectra averaged over 27-day Bartle's rotations. The data files for both sets are formatted in the same manner and include nomenclature definitions for the channel, uh, the channel names, the uh, geometric factor for the CA-60 telescope, total counts uh, in each channel, total accumula accumulation times, uh, energy passband boundaries, and the computed fluxes. With these data, one may either examine the fluxes directly or reconstruct fluxes averaged over any number of days desired. This is ideal for generating event average spectra uh, or for analyzing long quiet time periods uh, during the last two solar minima. Here we show two oxygen spectra averaged over Bartle's rotations uh, two 2205 in early 1995 and 2375 in mid 2007. Uh, these two periods of time were of course during solar minimum uh, so we're looking at a, a very quiescent time in between events. Uh, by carefully filtering out event bearing days one could improve upon the spectra uh, extending the, uh, the integration time and producing a more finely resolved 
uh, quiet time spectra. This data set also lends itself very well to producing event integrated spectra. Here we show the results of integrating over the 2003 Halloween event seen by both ACE and Ulysses, albeit at slightly different times and over slightly different uh, time intervals. We offer no analysis of this event at this time, uh, beyond the presentation of the spectra shown here. We do find it interesting that while the helium fluxes are in very good agreement, uh, note that the heavier ion spectra show a much higher intensity at ACE than they do at Ulysses. You can find these data at the Fundamental Technologies website or by visiting the Virtual Heliospheric Observatory. Fundamental Technologies is located on the web at www.ftex.com. That's F-T-E-C-S.com. You can visit the Virtual Heliospheric Observatory at vho.nasa.gov. There are a few people we'd really like to extend our special thanks to. First, Olga Malandraki for really prompting us to explore and exploit the PHA data more fully and start us uh, down the path of thinking uh, just what really was possible beyond what we were doing already with the PHA data. And uh, also special thanks to Alan Tilka, who gave us, uh, just was instrumental in, in helping us to refine the normalization for our fluxes. Uh, without his help, uh, we wouldn't be presenting today, I can tell you that for nothing. Uh, we'd also like to thank Sus of Tranquil for his assistance with the Ulysses Co-Spin LET data and helping us to extend the spectra that, that we were able to produce with the PHA data uh, beyond the energy range uh, that PHA is capable of uh, and to, again, to uh, really verify that we have the normalization correct. We hope you find these data sets useful and uh, fruitful as you explore the inner heliosphere along with us. And if you have questions or comments about these data, please contact me at dpatter at jccc.edu or you can contact me uh, via my office phone, 913-469-8500, extension 4268. Uh, if you're unable to get a hold of me, you can contact Jerry Manweiler or Thomas Armstrong uh, there at Fundamental Technologies. Uh, thank you for listening.